Hey guys, Derry here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus Devon's Path. So, the last part time we left off, we had just gone to the terrace where we had a nice little conversation. Uh, my god, why can't I remember the names right now? It's still early. Blah, 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 I can't. Um, the cute bat guy and the tanuki. Now, I'll remember their names later, don't worry. Anyway guys, let's jump right back into it. <clears throat> Hope you all are having a wonderful morning. Anyway. <clears throat> Oh, God, I don't know if I can say that within the first 30 seconds without the video being gonna, gonna be, like, demonetized later on. Um, ah, hell, whatever. <clears throat> Holy shit, Carvin, are you alright? He rushes towards me, grabbing my shoulders and looking at my face with horror. Seeing the frightened look on his face, I get pretty spooked myself, but the absurdity of the situation hits me and I start laughing. Trolf looks at me with immense confusion and I laugh even harder. Are, are, are you feeling well? Do you have a fever or something? I finally recompose myself and take a step back. Sorry, I just got up too fast. And here I rushed here to the rescue, gravely concerned about you. He shakes his head, looking at me with disappointment. What are you doing here, Carvin? Well, I don't really have anything to do, so I was just relaxing on a couch before I saw you there. <sighs> oh, there's Eon. <clears throat> he looks at me suspiciously. Unacceptable. We have to find you something to do then. Do you want to tag along? Oh, this could be fun. Or at least sounds more interesting than lazing around the whole day. That I can do anywhere any, at any time. Sure, what do you have in mind? Actually, not much. I'm pretty bored myself. I came here to look at the scenery, hoping that I could maybe find someone here by accident. And look... Well, that's disappointing. Hey, sorry I don't have some great plan prepared. I didn't think I needed to come here with one. Hmm, we could always just sit here in the lobby. Wouldn't it be better to go sit in a room? Actually, why are you sitting here instead of your room? Oh, wait. I know. Why don't we go to the common space? I think, that, I think there's a record player there. Hmm, I haven't noticed it, but then I really didn't look at it before. I'm glad he didn't wait for me to answer, because I don't really feel like explaining it at all again. Good idea. Why not? Great. Let me lead the way, then. We moved to the common space. I've passed it a few times before, but I never paid much attention to it. It's divided into two parts, with the snooker table in a separate room, and a few armchairs and couches arranged around a table on the other. There's also a record player standing there in the corner. It's definitely an old one that fits the room very well, adding a lot of charm to it. There's also a fireplace that certainly adds to the coziness. It's obvious that a lot of attention was put into designing this space. Mm-hmm. I like it here. He sits down on the sofa and points to the space next to him, clearly expecting me to sit there. Uh, yeah, I can sit next to him. It doesn't bother me. I take the spot next to him reluctantly. We're so close to each other that I'm almost snuggled against him. He has been nothing but nice to me, but it still feels a bit weird. It's the second time we're seeing each other, and I barely know him. It feels like our friendship progresses much faster on his part than on mine. It's quite hot in the room with a burning fireplace, but I especially feel it now, sitting next to Torolf. I take my sweater off and throw it onto the armrest before turning back to the tiger. <clears throat> uh, Torolf? Uh, tell me something about yourself. So far, I only know what. Uh, so far, I only know. So far, I only know what you study and where you live, and it doesn't really say anything about you as a person. Trolf nods and lifts his finger in a stopping gesture. Sure, but first, let's play some music. Some of the albums are already scattered on the table on which the record player stands, and Torolf leans in to take a better look at them. They have some good ones here. Do you have any preferences? Oh, they have the new Nimble Foxes album? Oh, they have the new Nimble Foxes album! I was listening to it a lot lately. I have an idea, though. Let's pick something neither of us knows. Fine by me. Maybe this one. He picks one of the albums. It has a white cover with a tiger sitting on an orca-shaped rock among flowers, looking at the sunset. It's vivid and colorful, but at the same time feels contemplative in a way. This cover art looks interesting. Buildings like Radiators, a weird name for a band. Do you know them? No, never heard of them. 
Okay, let's try this one then. He takes the black record out of the sleeves and puts it on the record player. The first notes of the track play from small wooden speakers standing on both sides of the player. Soft acoustic guitar that fits the space well. Record players have their charm. I haven't seen one in a long while. There was one trendy jazz cafe in Helsinki that had one. I've been there twice, but that was the last time probably. I've heard people likening the vinyls to analog photography, but I think the comparison misses the point. With analog photography, the focus is on medium and its limitations, and the end result is usually visibly different from digital photography, but it's not really the case with analog records. I don't agree that they sound vastly different unless the record is scratched or dirty, but with vinyls, the focus is on the ritual itself. Admiring the album cover, taking the record out of its sleeve, cleaning it first properly, then dropping the needle and observing how the vinyl record revolves on the plate. It's much more absorbing than just playing a song on Stripeify. So, what would you like to know? Hmm, maybe tell me why you chose to study experimental biology. Oh, that's a complicated story. So, I'll start by saying that I first got a bachelor's degree in computer science and worked for a few years as a web developer. I got the first job when I was still studying, but when I got my degree I was offered a much better position elsewhere. I accepted it, of course. Everything was going well. I was earning more than I ever hoped for, while doing less than I thought I would have to. But I'm not one to stay. I'm not one to ever stay in one play in one place. After the second year there, I started to feel bored of it all. It never was a thrilling job. But for a while, I liked what I was doing. I couldn't see myself doing that same thing for the rest of my life, though. Oh my God! Why am I yawning? <clears throat> After two years of working, I'd had enough money saved to quit and just live off the savings for a long while. I don't know if you've ever heard of the term mini-retirement, but that's pretty much what I did. I retired, just not permanently. So I found myself having a lot of time to think some stuff through and decide what, to, what I want to do with my life. And I understand that I wanted to do something more substantial. I wanted to be at the frontier of science. I wanted to work on something groundbreaking. Something actually meaningful. So after some research, I decided to go with experimental biology. That's pretty much it. Not very interesting, was it? Wow. That's a lot of new facts. I thought you're maybe a year or two older than me, but that would mean you're 24? 26, actually. I finished my studies, worked for two more, two more years, traveled around the world for a year, and then ended up here. You traveled around the world? Where were you? Mostly Asia. China, Taiwan, Thailand, Vietnam, Japan, Korea. Those countries really fascinate me because they're highly developed, but the culture is so much different. I never felt at home there, but somehow I still kept coming back. Hey, how about we get a bit more comfortable? He puts his arm around me and snuggles me against himself. It's so sudden that I don't even protest. Although, I have to admit that it feels nice. His intentions are pretty clear, and I don't know what to think of it yet, though. He certainly is a handsome tiger, but not only I but not but not only I just met him today, he's also older than me by a lot more than I expected. Which might be hot, actually. Yeah, hell yeah, I'm actually older than him. Yes, so sweet. I'll worry about that later. I lie down sideways on the sofa, wrap my arm around him, and rest my head on his chest. He in turn snuggles me up closer and pets my head with his other paw. This is nice. I could probably spend a whole day like this. I can hear a deep rumbling rising from his chest. Looks like he's enjoying himself too. I press my snout against his chest. He smells really nice and fresh with no hint of musk. He certainly takes care of himself and it shows. My paw runs along his side slowly, exploring his body. I never cuddled like that with anyone before and now I want more. I wrap my arms around him and hold on to him closely while he keeps putting, petting my head, his other paw snuggle, snuggling me into himself. The vinyl record keeps revolving, the tiny needle making lap after lap through the black grooves. His speakers fill the room with a mellow sound of guitar and occasional pops and cracks of the record. Toro presses the tip of his snout against my head. His warm breath tickles my skin. You're cute, you know that? Yeah, you've told me already. The words come out muffled by his fur, but I don't care. I don't want to let go of him. A flame flickers in the fireplace, illuminating the room with a warm glow. I don't even care if someone else sees us. 
It feels like we're the only two creatures in this whole world. This room the only place that really exists. I cling to this moment with my whole consciousness. He smells so nice. Garvin? How are you doing? Are you happy to be here? This is so fascinating. Can you feel it? Everything around us is alive. I could sit here all day and marvel. I'm glad you're here with me, Garvin. Do you want to see where the path will take us? He grabs my paw and starts pulling me with him deeper into the forest. I close my eyes and follow him blindly. <clears throat> I open my eyes. There is a wooden ceiling high above me. I look around, disoriented. I'm in the common space. I probably shouldn't use a, such a deep voice for Rune. He probably doesn't have one that deep. The wood in the fireplace is still burning, and the evening sun pours through the windows. I must have slept for only a few minutes. Slowly, I start to remember why I'm here. Looks like Tarolf is gone already. I stand up, stretching out and yawning. I really need that. I really needed that nap. I feel much more rested and energized now. I notice my sweater still laying on the armrest. I pick it up and put it back on. The vinyl is still revolving on the record player, even though the album has ended. Looks like it's it looks like it's a fully manual model. I lift the tone arm and put the record back in its sleeve. I leave the common space and start walking back to the lobby to stretch my legs. I wonder where Turlf went. I never asked him about his room number. I wouldn't even know where to look for him. I'm sure we're going to bump into each other again soon. Yes! Swimming pool. Devin said that he might go there. With some luck, maybe I'll find him. I haven't been in I haven't been in one in ages. It's really cool that our guest house has one. I didn't expect such luxuries when I first when I first heard about the camp. Looks like there is a joint locker room for both the sauna and swimming pool, which is pretty which is pretty common. Carvin. Rune is standing in the locker room, shirtless. He smiles when he sees me entering, raising a paw to greet me. I stop in my tracks, standing in the locker room door, not expecting to walk in on a buff, bare-chested buck here. <laughs> I love that look. What? See something you like? He leans on a locker teasingly. God damn it, please just don't get a nosebleed now. Um, hi there, Rune. Hey, don't be so serious, I'm just messing with you. He winks at me and continues to undress, taking off his trousers. Feel like, feel like swimming a few laps with us? Devin is already inside if you're looking for him. I wanted to see Devin. I thought I might find him here. Okay, I can wait for you, unless you mind. I get a bit flustered at the thought of Rune watching me undress, but it's not like he wouldn't see me almost naked in the pool anyway. No, feel free to. I pick a free locker and put the jacket inside, hanging it on a hook. I took all, I took my shoes off at the door and went in bear pod. So now I put them on the so now I put them on the bottom of the locker. Only now I notice a distinct smell of chlorine that hangs in the air heavily. As I take a full lungful of it, I'm instantly flooded by a wave of memories from various swimming pools and locker rooms I've been in throughout my life. This one is fairly small, which is to be expected for a moderately sized guest house with just around 15 lockers and two rows and two benches between them. Two of the lockers are taken by Rune and Devon, so it must be the only three of us here at the moment. I take off my shirt and trousers, folding it neatly and putting on a shelf inside a locker, and then a sudden realization hits me. I look at Rune, who's doing some warm-up exercises, changing to swimwear already. He notices me looking and turns in my direction. What's up? I don't have any swimming shorts. Hmm... A devious smile appears on your snout. You stop that. You stop that right now. I'm going to boop your snoot. I don't see a problem. There's no one besides us in here. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Are you suggesting... Rune winks at me, grinning. Well, why not? Hmm. It's good to do something crazy once in a while. And as Rune said, there's no one besides us here now anyway. And no one will probably come so soon before dinner. Ah, what the hell. I take off my underwear and throw it into the locker, on top of the rest of my clothes. For us Finns, 
Nudity is not something uncomfortable or weird. In fact, it's a normal part of our lives. I'm not sure if it's the same for Norwegians, but the fact that Rune even proposed that now would suggest so. I closed the locker, leaving the key inside the lock. Okay, ready now? Let's go. I nod and follow him to the showers. The tiled floor feels cold under my paws, so I hasten my steps to match those of Rune. There are no separate stalls, just one row of shower heads extending from the wall. Oop, alright guys. It is time to pause the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell for the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!